Hi, and welcome. I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, Presbyterian Minister of Three Congregations in Eastern Ontario, and I'm also the questioning pastor. Today's question is, did Jesus actually live? And the answer, if you're a Christian, you know he did. If you're not a Christian, I may not be sure. In the 19th century, um, I'm sure people have been asking the question for centuries, you know, what evidence is there of, of Jesus? But in the 19th century, there was a, a quest for the historical Jesus. And they were trying to figure out what evidence do we have that supports Jesus actually lived? And then what did Jesus actually do or say? Can we go through the Gospels, the New Testament, but specifically the Gospels, and sort out what are true sayings of Jesus or true teachings and what parts have probably been added by the early church. And that quest for the historical Jesus is really important because we don't want to believe in blind faith. But at the same time, there's a danger about it. And the danger is we start focusing so much on details about Jesus's life that we forget the most important thing is what Jesus was teaching teaching us about God, about life, about ourselves, about what God wants from us and wants for us. So we can focus on the messenger to the point that we forget about the message. But at the same time, if the messenger is false, if the messenger didn't live, then our faith is false. Um, oh, that shocks you. But no, that's what, you know, Paul writes is, if Jesus didn't actually die and was resurrected, then our faith is in vain. And basically, we should be a laughingstock to the world. But if he did die and was resurrected, then the whole way that we look at the world is changed. So the question of where whether Jesus lived for real or didn't is important. But we have to remember to balance it with what is he there to tell us? So let's start with what the Bible says and focusing specifically on the New Testament. How accurate is the New Testament? Well, we know there's places where the New Testament isn't completely accurate. And that's one reason we're not sure just when Jesus was born or even just when he died. So Matthew places him in the time period of um, King Herod. And Luke places him in the time period of the Romans, when Quirinius orders the census. Uh, but when Herod was king, the Romans didn't have power. Uh, yes, Herod was a puppet king for the Romans, but the Romans didn't have any authority to call for a census or anything like that. And we have dates for Quirinius, and he's not at the time of Herod. So we've got a problem right there where some of those details don't mesh up. Maybe we're making the wrong assumption that it's not Herod the Great, that it's Herod the Great son, Herod. But the Romans kicked him out of power and that's when the Romans took over. So we still have that conflict between the two. Okay, so we know that the, the New Testament is not 100% accurate. But it is informative enough that if you want to know what's going on in the first century in Judea, Rome, whatever, you have to learn. You have to read the New Testament. You're going to find out about groups and factions within Judaism, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. What are they teaching? What do they believe? How are they relating to each other? What, what are some of the politics going on in the religious area? And what about the Jews in diaspora, which means the Jews outside of Judea? What are they going on? How are they assimilating or resisting assimilation in other communities? The New Testament gives a lot of information and Jews read it. They're very knowledgeable about it. At least Jewish scholars are. And because it gives them a window into their own. So the New Testament may not be 100% accurate, but it is extremely informative. Okay, that still doesn't answer the question, did Jesus actually live or not? 
Do we have sources outside the Bible that tell us about Jesus? And the answer is yes, we do. Tacitus is a Roman historian and he talks about Jesus. And Josephus is a Jewish historian. He talks about Jesus. And there's rabbinic sources talking about Jesus. So we do have references to Jesus from non-Christian sources. Now, if you look at the dates, many of these sources are after Jesus lived. They're not contemporary. It's they're, they're later, maybe even 100 years later. Isn't that a problem? Well, yes, in one way it is a problem. And in another way, it really isn't. Christianity spreads. And it spread to Rome. It spread to other parts of Asia Minor. And so, you know, the Tacitus is in Rome. And is, you know, who are these Christians? What are, what are they? And the message, the information he's getting is about Jesus. So this Jesus story is being spread by Christians, at least with, you know, 100 years of Jesus' life, death. So, yeah, okay, they're not contemporaries, but um, it shows us how old the Jesus story is. And how people believed that Jesus actually lived. There was a man named Jesus and he did these things. Now, did he actually do these things? Did he actually say these things? That's, you're now getting into a different realm. Again, you know, what is the message? Some people say, well, we don't have any evidence that Jesus lived from the time period we think he lived. Okay. There's no, nothing. Pontius Pilate didn't record anything about him. Nothing about, you know, the rabbinics, uh, the high priests. Uh, or, there, there just isn't anything from the time frame of Jesus that says Jesus lived. So that's proof he didn't live. No, that's not proof he didn't live. Sorry. That's proof that we have no sources. The absence of records, the absence of proof does not mean you get to prove the opposite. If we had contemporary records, sure, we now have evidence Jesus lived. The fact we don't have contemporary records, it does not prove he didn't live. It proves we don't have records. Okay, so let me explain what I mean. I'm also an amateur genealogist. And I'm quite fortunate that on my father's side, there was a lot of... Um, aristocracy, upper class, I would say low nobility. So I can trace my family tree on my father's side back to the middle ages, uh, quite a few ways. The Gavers, the Kinsmen, the Moody's, the Bowens, and I have a feeling there's a couple others. Uh, I'm not sure about the Freemans if they go back that far, but they go back, Kinsmen go back to the 1300s, Moody's go back to, I think just before 1000, Gavers again, just before 1000. So uh, lots of records, lots of evidence where they lived, uh, house sales, business sales, travel records, um, wheels, all of that stuff very recorded. Great. I go back to my mother's side and yes, the Spanglers and Spanglers go back to Germany and to the middle ages, but her maiden name was Leisure, L-A-S-U-R-E. And I go back to, Morton was my grandfather. And I think his, grand, his father was oh, John, William John, Johnette. Um, and then maybe I might have my great, great grandfather's name, but I don't have anything more. I don't have my great, 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 great grandfather, nothing, no evidence that they lived. And the same is with the Cain family, C-A-I-N, same thing. I only go back to the 1800s. Does that mean they didn't live? Uh, no. Well, you don't have any records that they lived. There's no records, uh, wills or uh, proof of sales or, or mention in his local histories. So how do you know they lived? Because I'm here, okay? My grandfather came from somewhere. 
My great grandfather came from somewhere. My great great grandfather came from somewhere. The fact I don't have the information of where they came from is not proof they didn't live, but it may be proof that they weren't important enough to leave traces. And stop and think, what is our story about Jesus? Our story about Jesus is he was not born in a palace. He was not born to rich people. He was born to a carpenter. His mother was basically an unwed mother. So in some ways he was a bastard. Uh, is anyone going to take notice of him? Is anyone going to document stuff he says or what he did when he was growing up? No. When he's teaching, okay, you had the one thing, the one apostle going, can anything good come out of Nazareth? It's like, he's from a, a nowhere town um, and he's from nowhere family. Who's going to pay attention to him? And ultimately, why would anyone pay attention to him? It's only after he died and came back to life that people really started struggling. What did this mean? Who was this Jesus? And what just happened? So did he actually live? We don't have absolute proof. No. But it's much more reasonable to assume that someone named Jesus, or Joshua, if you want the Jewish form, did live did influence people. And then the question for us, as it was for them, is when you hear his teachings and see the stories, read the stories, who is this guy? And what does he mean to me? So once again, I'm the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Gaver, and thank you for joining for today's Questioning Pastor.